you find yourself lost in Irving Land. Last time, the crew were setting up a communications relay system so they can talk to each other most anywhere. Everyone is working hard to get the relays in place. Relay station one to station two. We should be set up and operating within a few minutes. What? That's Dr. Smith working hard to avoid work and stuff his face, the two things he does best. As we saw last time, something has gone wrong with the relay system and some kind of alien signal is overloading it. Stop it! Stop it! It's destroying my eardrums! Me, uh, me, 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 me! All their communications have been destroyed, even their hand radios. There's your problem. Somebody filled it with rocks. That's supposed to be melted components. Oh yes, I see it now. Wait, no I don't. Find out what happened to the others. Station 3 the nurse to here. Let's get over there. On foot. Unless you've sprouted wings in the last few seconds. Come on. Madness. Sheer madness. Hiking in the day sun. Hey Don, somebody found a use for that hammer he gave you. Not necessarily a good use, but a use. John has been looking over the fried circuitry, which even includes their backup systems, and concludes that it had to be a deliberate attack. Well, then I think we'd better go and get the children. Well, I just realize by now that they can't reach us by radio. The sensible thing for them to do would be head right back here. Now we better wait. All right. They are sensible. I hope. It is my considered opinion, Will Robinson, that the sensible thing to do is return at once to the Jupiter. Well, I think it's just as sensible to try and find out what caused all this. The robot knows what caused it, a hypersonic wave from a powerful source that's not far away. Good. We'll find it and knock it out. Wait. Well? The source I have mentioned may be unknockable. Besides, other than the robot, what tools or gear do you have with which to do any knocking? Boy, this one really got clobbered. The girls weren't too close when it blew. What is this? Oh, the poor dears. Ah, uh, Smith, don't be so morbid. My guess is they hightailed it back to the Jupiter when this thing happened. Right now, we don't know. Time to move on to Will's station and see what happened there. Can't we assume that the same thing happened over there and make our way back to the Jupiter, too? My feet are a disaster area. Your life is a disaster area. I feel for you, Smith. Why don't you try walking barefoot? Barefoot, indeed. No sign of Will or the robot, so Don assumes they went back to the ship as well. If he would bother to look around for tracks, he might learn differently, but he's not doing that today. They probably blew simultaneously. Why? How? All right, Smith, let's get back to the Jupiter. Wait. Wait where you are. Wait for what? I didn't say anything. Come on, Smith, stop playing games with me. I'm not playing games. I think... It came from there. And besides, he may act like a scared little girl at times, but his voice doesn't sound like one. I think we should go. It's only a voice. It, it can't hurt us. Of course I cannot. Any more than I could hurt that stone behind you. She's just getting started. She says, go back to your ship and wait for further instructions. Now look, what's this all about? Prisoners may not ask questions. Prisoners? Surrender your weapons. Oh, thanks. Prisoners, eh? Presuming an awful lot, aren't we? But as I said, she's just getting started. Back at camp, she demands that they surrender their weapons. So far, they're refusing. John and Maureen are more concerned about the children, while Smith is probably hiding under his pillow. have yet another cave. I'm beginning to think this entire planet is hollow just like the last one. You're right, Robot. It does look kind of unknockable, but if I can just change the frequency so they don't interfere with ours. That is a dangerous step, Will Robinson. I caution against it. Well, you're always cautioning or warning against something. Yes, it's part of his job, remember? You helped program him to do that, remember? And you're sounding more and more like Dr. Smith. Stop it. Well, here goes. You're right, Robot. We'd better get 
get back to the Jupiter. I'm sorry, give me that first part again. You're right, Robot. And what was it you said before? You're always cautioning or warning against something. Then why didn't you listen to him? You complain that he's always warning and cautioning. You forgot to mention the part where he's always right. You seem to have forgotten all the times Dr. Smith convinced you to ignore the robot's warnings and it nearly got you killed or worse. I know this kid's a genius, but he's also a dingbat. Stand fast. Bring the male child here. We finally get to meet the source of the voice. Male children who attempt acts of aggression against us rarely live to reach maturity. He has no idea who you are or what you want or if your Igor clones were hostile. He acted to defend himself and the fact is you're the aggressor here. You attacked their equipment and now you're attacking him. But as we'll see, her attitude is very colonial European. What are you? I am a robot of the class M3, programmed to provide information and support to all Jupiter personnel. You sound much too masculine. Is that bad? It's ridiculous that they would create a machine in a man's image. Yes, their culture is different from yours. You can't accept that, can you? What I was doing wasn't an act of aggression. That machine busted our radio network. It was I who busted it, if that is your expression for destruction. But why, ma'am? My name is Neolani, nobly born of the Condor Nation of female warriors. Okay, noble Neolani, but you still haven't answered my question. She explains that male children aren't allowed to ask questions and men are useless, only good for menial tasks like guard duty. And at some point, I would assume, reproduction. Okay, Adamaniacs, her real name is Francine York. Quick without Googling. Whose girlfriend was she? Whatever your answer, she gets an A for ostentatiousness. Big deal. Everybody in the universe except us travels like that. Show us something new. She says she has the children so they have no choice but to give up the guns. She brings the whole group to her cave. Will. Mom! Oh, Will. The male child is a captive. Let him be. Yes, but he's my son. The women of my nation have had many sons. They are of little worth to us. So what? Go back to your nation then. Leave them alone. They have different standards, so get out of their faces. But it's easy to see what we're doing here. You have no doubt all wondered why you were taken prisoner. Yes, I've been more than wondering. And if I had half the chance... I'm not now, Don. Your moral courage is not what is needed here. What we need is your male animal strength. That is all. My world produces many pickle jars and our female warriors are unable to open them. Therefore, we require you. This planet has been chosen as a settlement for a pioneer colony of female warriors of the Condor Nation. You have been taken captive in order that you may prepare the landing pad and an electronic purifying arch through which all our warrior colonists will have to pass before breathing the air of their new home. As I said, her attitude is very colonial European. My culture is the best one, so I must export it to everyone everywhere, even if they don't want it, and even if I have to kill, maim, and enslave others to do it. I can't help but think of Francis Drake landing on the coast of California and immediately claiming the whole place for England even though he knew it was already populated. As if he had any right to do that, but that's the attitude. I found it, it's mine. Oh, there's people already there? Get them out of the way. I found it, it's mine. It's ours. We stole it, didn't we? Oh, by the way, those posts all around, they're a deadly force field. They ain't getting away, even though they'll try multiple times. The arch is almost built. Haven't you any conscience whatsoever, Smith? Of course I do. But you and the professor are so much stronger than I am. I know you wouldn't want me to tear a ligament. Oh, that's all right. We'll risk it. Oh, I shall never be the same. I can feel something tearing inside. It is always the seat of your pants, Dr. Smith. Stand up straight. See, we told you you could do it, and such a great big rock, too. Who's a strong boy? Are you a strong boy? Oh, such a strong boy. 
As I said, this arch thing is almost finished, but Dr. Smith thinks it needs something. That's a fat lot of good for helping them get rid of Neilani. Did I ever tell you that had I not taken to medicine, I would have become a great muralist and sculptor? It occurs to me that Michelangelo should have been known as the Zachary Smith of his time. Will you assist the master? Genuine masters don't have to go around telling everyone they're masters. Just as people who have a genuinely better culture don't have to force it on other people. If it's really that great, others will see it and want to emulate it. If they don't, maybe you're the one who needs to go back to the drawing board. How dare you waste precious time? I was just adding a final little artistic embellishment, my lady. What final embellishment? My signature. You have not worked very hard. Oh, you noticed. But he struck some kind of chord in her because she's making him her consort. And she gave him the magic stick. All right, you yarders. Shape up and get back to work. Oh, please, gentlemen. You simply must cooperate. Neolani will be terribly annoyed at me if you don't. Well, that's just too, too, too bad, isn't it, Smith? Well, what are you waiting for? Just to see how far you've gone over, Smith. If you haven't figured out by now that there is no limit with him, you have not been paying attention, boys. Dr. Smith, have you forgotten whose side that you're on? Zachary Smith has always been on Zachary Smith's side and nobody else's will. You've seen it dozens of times. Right now, he's angling for artist and residence in the new colony. He played artist once before in the first season. As I recall, his masterpiece looked like a poop smear. His painting may not be of much use in dealing with Neilani, but some other items he's made just might. Well, maybe we could do something about the arch. Well, how would that help, son? Well, she said that they had to pass through it to breathe in this atmosphere, remember? Maureen quietly turns off a section of the force field and Will and the robot sneak out. Will gets some plastic explosive and a detonator from the drill site. Now, all we have to do is figure out some way to put it in the arch so they don't see it. I have programmed my computers to be sly, devious, and sneaky, and have come up with a Dr. Smith solution. I will tell you about it on the way. That seems appropriate somehow. Besides painting the ceiling, Smith made a couple of little clay cherubs to adorn the front of it. Well, what do you think of it, Robot? That is probably the most beautiful piece of work ever to have been made out of plastic explosives. Well, I'm not as good as Dr. Smith at making statues, but mine's got more of a kick to it. The detonator is wired because in the far distant future when we have the ability to travel between star systems, we don't have such a thing as a wireless detonator, so Will gets it all hooked up and buries the wire. The robot will wait out of sight with the detonator until morning when the colonizers are supposed to arrive. Uh, why not blow it up now? Well, Smith, how do I look? <laughs> 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 I look rather ravaging myself, don't you think? He said it like I can I have to do this. Pizza, pizza. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Something's happened to one of my lovely little statues. But it'll only take a jiffy to give it a little touch-up. But Dr. Smith! Yes? Nothing. I told you to blow it up when you had the chance. Will keeps trying to tell him not to hit it with a hammer, even though a little shock like that isn't supposed to be enough to detonate plastic explosive. Will finally has to tell him the plan. Smith handles it with his usual grace and charm. Explosive. Will explains. Smith doesn't want to destroy his beautiful art. Suddenly my mind is flashing back to Bridge on the River Kwai. I'm not sure why. And besides, if you think Neilani's going to give you any extra privileges, well, you're wrong. To her, you're just another man or, or a mouse like those guards of hers. I should never be a mouse. For a minute, you sounded like the Dr. Smith I used to know before you got all involved with her. But I'm just kidding myself. You're not the old Dr. Smith. William. Well, what is it? He can't take that from Will. He crumbles like a border wall and agrees to help. He'll put the statue back up and Will will find a way to get up there and connect the wires. Meanwhile, all the work is done. We've done the work you expected of us. We've cleared the pad and erected the arch. Good. Under my strict supervision, of course. We'd have done it without your supervision. And for one reason. 
to be free of you and your colonists. Now I demand our release, as well as the release of my family. And now it's time for the other shoe to drop. But there are other planets. And what's that supposed to mean? Colonization is a never-ending task for my nation. You'll be needed to prepare for their arrival wherever they land. She never actually said she'd let any of you go. She's a colonizer. She considers you a lower form of life. Colonizers always do. She'll work them until they can't work anymore, and then she'll turn them into whatever those guard guys are. Ain't that a retirement to look forward to. Good thing the cherub is back in place. Back to your place, male child. Here they come. Now! And there they go. Acme rocket engines have the fastest reverse gear in the galaxy. And your colonists are now puddles on the floor. Ah me, the last relic of my creative genius. That is not a product of your creative genius. That was made by Will Robinson out of plastic explosive. Ah, ah. <laughs> I never said I was perfect. I had to share that one. Neilani is ruined. Disgraced, humiliated, defeated by mere males. Oh, I should be court-martialed, sentenced to a lifetime of degrading drudgery, cooking, cleaning, laundry, squalling, sniveling children. Oh! Sounds horrible. Who would want to do that? Ahem. I believe you did it for some 20 years. Shut up. She should think about the possibility that males aren't quite as mere as she thought. At least, some aren't. None of us are quite sure about her <coughs> consort. Well, it isn't a defeat to acknowledge that men are just as good as women. My equality of the sexes has advantages you may have overlooked. I must tell my people about that. Perhaps they will listen. If you can be open to the idea, it's a start. Really good ideas often start with one person. Well, we've replaced all the transistoroids. A transistoroid is a thing that looks like a transistor, but really isn't. All that remains now is to lay in the relays. And make sure we get back to full power gradually. Well, that'll be Smith's job. I foresee trouble. All right, let's go over it once more. When you see the yellow light go on, hit the blue button. Then wait two seconds and hit the black button. Then wait three seconds and hit the green. Child's play. Well, that's why we picked you to do it. And even that was a mistake. What's that for? A signal from your husband. Now let me see. Well, whatever it is John wants you to do, I think you better do it. By all means. Now, which button was it? Uh, the green button, of course. There. Very good, Smith. Now try person, man, woman, camera, TV. By the time he's done with that one, the woman will have the TV on her head and the person will be a camera. He'll keep the man around to remind himself what species he is. Right now, there's a live wire flailing around inside the ship and it threatens to electrocute someone or start a fire. Or both. I'm probably being a little anachronistic if I attribute an anti-colonial attitude to this episode. Honestly, considering it's the mid-60s, it's questionable whether such ideas even crossed the writers' minds. Our main focus was equality and the dangers of extremism, especially in terms of an I'm-better-than-you attitude. Neolani had almost absolute power, but it was clear she wasn't happy. She was filled with a combination of rage and lust for power, and those things burn you out fast. It also gets lonely inside that bubble of self-service, which is why, despite her attitude toward men, she felt the need to take a consort. I'll grant she could have picked a better one than a guy who dresses like a Halloween Spartacus, but she didn't have much of a pool to choose from. I have a feeling she knew if she went for Dawn, Judy would scratch her eyes out. For all her occasional fantasizing about having more choices, Judy has to admit that one choice is better than none. So hands off. I'll see you next time you find yourself lost in Irving Land. If you enjoyed this episode, click the like button and let us know. 
be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you always know what is happening because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. We make sure of it. We control his computer. Until next time.